So a few years ago, I bought myself um, a MIG welder from Bunnings. Now this is the Azito gas and gasless MIG welder. Um, I've been using this thing with a gas bottle for ages. And it does all right. The, with the flux core stuff, it's, yeah, it's okay. But recently I've been having lots and lots of trouble with this thing not welding properly. And yeah, it's been pretty, pretty abused. I've changed the liner in this thing once. Um, the gun, you know, look, it's been bashed around a bit. <laughs> it doesn't leak. It doesn't leak, but uh, I think it's time for an upgrade, so. And you can't detach these, so it makes moving it a pain in the ass. So, um, I'm gonna go from this, I'm gonna install a standard um, Euro connector, I think they call it. It's a standard Euro connector. It's a four meter lead, and the gun's brand new, so. It'll be much easier to, to use, disconnect, move. This is the other end of the uh, um, Euro connector. That'll go on the front of the welder. And then we've got a four meter power cable with the same type of, it's the same kind of connector. Just chuck it in there. And that way it's uh, quickly removable. So to do this, I don't think it's gonna be too difficult. Because if you look inside this welder, everything seems to line up. Grab this guy. This is just a loose fit, mind you. It's just, just front of it's about there. So we put this about here. Right. That's lining up pretty well. See, this thing has to, the wire has to go through this hole here. And it looks like it's built design like this must be a standard so I can clamp that in between that plastic there run it in between the wire feeder and then the standard outlet on the front just in front of here so I'll have to remove this I might have to make a bigger hole I'm not sure and it should be right I've just got to plumb the uh, the electrical in the uh, the start stop button and then the gas feed wiring the gas feed tubing which that'll be a pain that goes down the back here right into the back of the unit so I'll have to open it right up Yeah, let's get to work. All right, where did we leave off? We left off having to create loops here. One from here to go to the gun, from here to go to the earth terminal. Right. I'm going to get this bit of cable inside here, clamp it, and then solder it. Right, hey. Two power cables ready to go. So I've got the uh, Euro plug connected here. I had to cut the fascia here and here because this is the only spot you can put it. And uh, luckily enough, I was able to install the ground ground clamp here. It was actually a hole for it with a perfect cutout and everything. So that's solid as three bolts in here, not moving at all. That's not moving. I've been probing around this thing because I just realised that this doesn't have a gas solenoid installed. So this is a gun, and to save money, what they've did is they've actually got a, a physical gas solenoid in here. So when you press this, it connects the electrical connection, but also allows the gas to flow through the nozzle. So when you click that, it does it all in one hit. They've done it to save money. So what I've had to do here is pull the control board off and probe around with a multimeter and figure out where the uh, voltage is when the current, when the circuit's active. And I found out that 
this here, when it's active, we get 12 volts across these two here. So I'm just going to hook a relay up to this and see if it's got enough power to power a relay, which it should. And then if it does, then I have to buy a gas solenoid and install it, install it connected to that. So when I pull the trigger, it allows gas to flow automatically. So this is this is the switch from the gun. When we connect these two together, we get 12 volts out here. I've just put this uh, relay on here just to make sure it works, but this will be replaced with a gas solenoid. But turn the welder on. So see it still operates normally. Still operates fine. The only difference is you can't see this, but I can feel this. The relay is clicking. The relay is actually clicking here. So that's good. On, off. Okay, so while I was fixing this thing, I found out what was actually wrong with it and why it was welding horribly with lots of spatter everywhere. This connection here actually runs down to the positive lead. I don't know if you can see it. It's down in there. See that connection there, that red terminal? Here, I'll get you in there. It connects to that other side of that red terminal there. And that, in turn, connects to this side here. Now it's just a bolt that goes all the way through. This side was tight, but this side, this side here was as loose as, yeah, you see the connection going in there? It was loose as. So what would have been happening is when this thing was welding, everything looks fine, but on the back, the two terminals would have been really, really loose. And that would have been sparking and arcing and the proper current couldn't get to the welding job. That's why this thing wasn't welding properly. So I've got this solenoid. Uh, it's a 12 volt gas solenoid. Put the link in the description. Um, I had to buy these uh, fittings here. I actually found these from um, Super Jeep Auto of all places. 1 8 inch uh, NTP adapters I think they call them. Yeah and then yeah. Got some hose clamps for the gas side and everything. We'll test that in a minute. So this is the gas solenoid. There you go. Yes, yeah, so it's a 12 volt um, system here. Nothing really special about it. Uh, gas in and out. Actually, I might mark that with a marker because I'm going to forget that. Put an arrow like this, it says that way, <laughs> gas flow. Yeah, cool. So there's the valve. These NTP connectors out. So one should go in here like this. Yeah, good fit. Yeah, I can feel that tightening nice and good. So there we go, that's our solenoid that can be placed in here anywhere. So before doing that, I think I might connect this to the gas bottle gas bottle in here, low pressure, put that into a, pipe, a bottle of water and apply voltage to this and see if it actually works. Alright, first things first, we'll give this thing a bit of voltage and see if it'll chooch. Negative, positive, sounds pretty good to me. Beautiful. works as expected. Should see a whole lot of bubbles come out of that bottle. Oh, yep. Ah, it's working pretty good to me. I have two mounting points here which are tiny. Um, it doesn't screw in all the way so that might be possible for me to wedge it in between there with a washer. I still got the problem with this. If I could flip this around, it would be perfect. Oh, yeah? Oh, how good's that? Just drill out this washer. So you should be able to go around here, through the back there, and that should give me enough gap in the front to bite into that, but still hold it firmly in place.
Machine's on. Let's see if we hear that gas sign over there. That doesn't sound right. But I don't know what's going on there. It worked with the relay, no worries. Okay, so I've been at this for quite a while. I had a problem where um, I hooked this uh, relay up to the connections here that give me 12 volt when the machine's active, and this works fine. But as soon as I hooked my gas solenoid up here, it started buzzing and humming and freaking out. And I did a lot of troubleshooting and found that this relay here only pulls 1.6 amps on 12 volt. Yeah. And this thing pulls 6 amps, so it's pulling too much current. So I was able to put five, uh, sorry, three 5 watt resistors in series, which gives me 15 watt worth of resistance and that pulls this thing down to I think just um, just over 2 amps on 12 volts and it seems to work so have a look at my voltmeter here, this is on amps, this is measuring current there you go 1.6 so and I can feel this thing clicking over gone down to 2 5 watt trans, uh, resistors and that seems to be working quite well. So we just turn the gas on, fire it up, and I don't know if you can hear the gas coming out of there. And flow meter. Beautiful. Working perfectly. Turn it off. So what I figured out was this thing pulls out, I think it was one point. 1.5 amps worth of current on a 12 volt circuit. This thing was trying to pull nearly six. So I put in um, two 5 watt resistors here, uh, current limiting resistors, and it got it down to I think two amps. That's enough for the circuit to run it. So that's all it was. So I'm just gonna go ahead and button all this up now. Make it look all nice, put it back together, and then I can start using my brand new Euro plug welder. How good's that? Wow, what a difference. What a difference. Oh, I'm quite pleased with that and the cables are so much longer. Look at that, look how much cable. I could be all the way over here in welding. I had to be. That's fantastic. I just want to keep welding. <laughs> so much fun, it works now. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, I'm happy. What an upgrade. Even that's warm. <laughs> OK, 
Cables aren't hot, that's good. All right, I'll get the camera and I'll bring you in close here. Have a closer look. These are the last two welds that I just did. Oh, come on, focus. These are the last two welds I did. This one here and that one there. And uh, uh, look at that, that is so much better. Hardly any, any splatter anywhere. There's hardly any um, oxidization around the welds, which is great. These are all just test welds before I was dialing it in. But this looks pretty good, dialing it in. That one too. I mean, big difference. You know, we went from, uh, I'll show you what it was. This, this was just tack, tack welding, mind you. This is what it was doing when I was tack welding. Look at all that black shit around here. Look at all this, look at all this black junk around here. And that was just tack welding. And now, doing proper full welds, after it fixed everything, it's going like that. Hardly any uh, blackening around the area. Um, but as for this welder, my welder does not have one of these charts that tell you, um, you know, wire, thi uh, wire speed versus amps versus metal thickness. So if anyone's got one, let me know and I'll print one out so I've got a cheat sheet up here because at the moment it's just going by feel and sometimes you get a bit lost and you need somewhere to refer to. But uh, I'd say that's a successful upgrade. Yeah, quick disconnect, quick disconnect on the earth, and not to mention, I mean, look at look at the increase in length. <laughs> it's just amazing. This is the original gun here. That's that's where it would have been mounted inside the machine about there. Versus the new gun. I think this is 1.8 meters. So that's where the old gun finished. There, and then the new gun goes almost like another two meters. So you can really, really get a far away from the welder to get the job done. See, the biggest pain with the short gun was you, uh, you'd have to keep moving the welder all the time. It was such a pain. But now, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's four meters away. That's a good four meters away. And the, old, uh, the old tip, you can see, look, two meters. And the, and the welding clamp, the old welding clamp was even half that, probably a meter and a half. So I'd say that's a pretty good upgrade. Thanks for watching.